The lower respiratory system, the lower respiratory tract, includes the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, and the lungs. And it's broken up into two zones. The first zone, the more superior zone, is the conducting zone. And its job is to simply conduct or transport air to and from the regions of gas exchange. So there's no gas exchange that occurs in the conducting zone. It is going to cleanse, warm, and also humidify the air. The most inferior zone, where the alveoli are, is the respiratory zone. And this is a very important zone for gas exchange. And it consists of these microscopic structures, beginning with the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, and finally the alveoli, where gas exchange itself happens. So the larynx is going to... Let's look at the basic anatomy of the larynx, which is commonly referred to as the voice box. It is going to extend from about the third to the sixth cervical vertebrae, and it attaches to the hyoid bone. And what it does is it provides three main functions. The first is a what's called a patent airway. That means an open airway. It routes air and food into the proper channels. And finally, voice production, which is because of the vocal folds. So let's look at the framework, the structure itself of the larynx. It has nine hyaline cartilages, except for the epiglottis. And the epiglottis is elastic cartilage because it has the ability to kind of um, close off the trachea so that food doesn't go into the windpipe. It goes into the epiglottis, hopefully. So the first cartilage is the thyroid cartilage. It's a large cartilage, shield-shaped cartilage, and it's the location of the laryngeal prominence or the Adam's apple, which is commonly, it's commonly referred to. And if we look at these different um, cartilages down here, notice that um, the cricoid cartilage is the one that is not paired, but the rest of them are paired. The arytenoid cartilages, cuneiform cartilage, is, and corniculate cartilages. So let's begin by looking at the epiglottis first. And as I mentioned before, the epiglottis is very helpful during swallowing. So it prevents food from entering the trachea. So obviously a very important function. Then the vocal folds in this location are also referred to as vocal cords. And they're going to kind of work like um, guitar strings, if you will. And so the thicker they are, um, the, the lower the voice is going to be. And we'll talk about that in just a couple slides. So the opening between these vocal folds is called the glottis. And the epithelium of the larynx is stratified squamous epithelium. However, below that, it's pseudostratified, ciliated, columnar epithelium. And that's going to be the trachea inferior to it. But the larynx, remember, is an opening for both food and air, so that's why we see stratified squamous epithelium. So this slide and the next slide shows the location of the larynx. On this image, we can see the laryngeal prominence, the Adam's apple, and the epiglottis is located in the posterior region, the elastic cartilage. So the next slide is also showing the larynx, and we see a mid-sagittal section of it with the epiglottis here, and we can see the various cartilages. Here's the thyroid cartilage in the front, the paired cartilage, the cuneiform, corniculate, and arytenoid, and then the cricoid cartilage, which is not paired. So the movement of the vocal folds look just like we see on this slide. And air is going to pass through this hole here, the glottis. So in image A, the vocal folds are in the closed position. So there's a closed glottis. But on the image to the right, we see vocal folds in the open position. So air is going to pass through this. 
and the vocal folds then are going to determine the um, speech that's actually heard, the sound that is produced by this instrument. So men, as we know, have lower a lower pitch, and the reason for this is because they have longer vocal cords, and their vocal cords vibrate more slowly. So the faster that they vibrate, the higher the pitch is going to be. And there's some there's some men that have pitches at various levels. If we think about singing, um, young men will sometimes have a soprano voice occasionally, but then once men hit puberty, that decreases. And again, the reason for that is that the pitch is determined by the length and the tension of the vocal cords. So women, again, have a higher pitch because their vocal cords are thinner, lighter, and vibrate faster. Another important function of the larynx is that it can act as a sphincter. And when it acts as a sphincter, it um, is going to act to prevent air passage. It closes off, so the glottis closes to prevent exhalation. The abdominal muscles contract. And this is something that would be used for uh, straining, for emptying one's rectum, or stabilizing a trunk for heavy lifting, something like that. And that is called a Valsalva maneuver. So in our next journey in the respiratory system, we have the trachea. And in the trachea, the windpipe, it's approximately four inches long about three quarters inches in diameter and very flexible. So the walls of the trachea have three different layers. The internal layer, the deepest layer, is the ciliated pseudostratified epithelium with goblet cells. And there's cartilaginous rings that are surrounding the trachea and that's 16 to 20 C-shaped cartilage rings. And you can feel those when you touch the front of your windpipe. You can feel those cartilage rings. And then the outermost layer is called the adventitia. And then there is a muscle called the tracheolus. And that muscle consists of smooth muscle fibers that connect the posterior walls of the cartilage rings. And so it would be found in between the trachea and the esophagus. So the esophagus is posterior to the trachea. And where the trachea is located is at the, the, or the bifurcation is seen between T4 and T5. And where the trachea bifurcates is called the carina. And so it bifurcates or splits into two main bronchi. So this image is showing us the trachea and the composition of the tracheal wall. So notice the anterior view, the anterior portion, is uh, where the hyaline rings would be located. The outer wall is the adventitia, hyaline cartilage producing those rings, submucosa, and then lining the inner wall of the trachea where the air would be, would be the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, which we can see the view on the right here. And then between the trachea and the esophagus is the smooth muscle trachealis. So inside the trachea, the pseudostratified ciliated epithelium looks like the image that we see at the bottom with a scanning electron micrograph. It has the ability to flush or move particles in a superior direction out of the trachea to protect us.